Hey guys, John from JSP Back. In our last video, we pulled the J160 transmission out of our beam swapped A86, and we found that we had broken our eBay clutch. So since then, we ordered a new Exidy clutch from Battle Garage, and this is an OEM replacement clutch, which is actually gonna work great for this application because the A86 is quite a bit lighter than an Alteza, so it'll effectively have more clamping force than if it's used in a heavier car. So let's get started, throw the J160 back into the A86. The first step before we install the clutch is to use a little bit of acetone on a rag to clean the mating surface on the flywheel. Next, we take the dry side of the rag and wipe off any additional residue. Now we install the clutch disc using the alignment tool. The pressure plate gets the same cleaning treatment before it gets installed. Before tightening any of the bolts, I use the alignment tool to find the center line of the alignment on the clutch disc. This can be done sort of just by wiggling the alignment tool around until it's visually centered. Now I'm just going to be snugging these bolts up enough to hold the disc in place. I'm not tightening them all the way. That way I can pull the alignment tool out and make sure that it slides in and out easily so that when we install the transmission there's no trouble. After you're confident that the alignment tool slides in and out easily, then you can tighten down all of the bolts. In this case, all the bolts get torqued down to 14 foot-pounds before installing the transmission. After the clutch is installed, next we're going to address all of the clutch debris that's inside of the bell housing. When the clutch exploded, it sent a bunch of friction material all around the inside. All of this needs to be removed before installing the transmission again. That also includes removing the release bearing and the clutch fork to remove all of the debris that's built up on all of the greased surfaces. As you can see, there's quite a bit of clutch material that's built up behind this release bearing. After cleaning all the surfaces, then we apply a new fresh coat of grease. The newly cleaned bearing gets reinstalled with a retaining clip. Now it's time to install the transmission again. Because of the downward engine angle, I like to prop the front of the bell housing up with a little block or something similar. It'll make installing the transmission a bit easier. From my experience, this transmission is just about as big as you can fit into one of these cars without a bunch of hammering and cutting. So be careful when you're installing the transmission because it is a very tight fit. It's possible to potentially pinch brake lines, uh, damage hoses, things of that nature when you're installing it. So just take your time and be careful. After you're sure that the transmission input shaft has gone all the way through the clutch disc and into the pilot bearing, then you can start putting on some of the transmission bell housing bolts just to get them started so that you can raise the car back up and access the rest.
Here I like to jack up the back of the transmission just slightly to make sure that the mating surface of the bell housing is parallel with the back of the engine block. This will help to align all of the bolts when you're putting it together. I start by just slowly going back and forth working these two 17 millimeter, 12 millimeter thread bolts that are opposing each other that are kind of on the center line of the transmission. I'll do one side a little bit, do the other side a little bit, just making sure that the transmission is going on smoothly, it's not binding, it's not crooked, until it seats all the way. After I know that the bell housing is seated, then I can go back in and add all of the remaining bell housing bolts. After the bell housing is attached to the engine, then I can raise up the back of the transmission and mount the transmission cross member. In general, whenever I use any type of an impact tool, I'm just using it to speed up the installation process. I try not to use impact tools for tightening bolts all the way. I like to go back with hand tools and tighten them down the rest of the way. With the transmission mounted up to the body of the car, then we can come back to the front and raise the cross member that we lowered initially. I'm gonna raise this all the way up and go ahead and tighten down all the hardware. With the cross member installed, then we can come back to the transmission and install the wiring harness. This just has the reverse lights, the oxygen sensor, and the unused plug for the speed sensor. Next, the speedometer cable gets attached. This actually has a little key on it that you have to align inside of the adapter. So be careful when you install it, then come back and just snug it up with a little bit of a channel lock. Next, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the clutch slave cylinder. Don't forget to go back and tighten the steering universal joint that we loosened when we lowered the cross member. The next thing to install is the exhaust system. After the exhaust, then we can go ahead and put the drive shaft back in. Next, you're gonna install the bolts for the center bearing. Do not tighten these all the way, just make these finger tight. It's important that you tighten the back of the drive shaft first because this is gonna dictate 
the tension that is on that center bearing. After you install the bolts that hold the drive shaft to the differential, then we're going to go back and tighten the bolts that hold the center bearing onto the car. After you're done installing everything, go back and wipe off all of the grease and fingerprints off of the exhaust system and all of the other things underneath the car. Now it's time to put oil in the transmission. I use a 7590 Valvoline pretty much just because it comes in this cool squeeze bag thingy. It makes installing oil into the transmission very easy. I believe this transmission takes about two and a half quarts, but because I did not drain it completely when we pulled the transmission out, uh, two quarts is just enough to fill this up. Now we can lower the car and put the interior and shifter back together. This is all going to go back together just in the reverse order of how it came apart. First the JSP shifter gets installed, then we're going to install some Gorilla Tape around the shifter itself to seal up the hole, uh, then the rubber accordion boot goes on, and then the plastic pieces. After testing at the track, I realized I wanted a little bit longer shift lever, so I'm going to put this burnt titanium extended lever on this time. Again, because this car was originally automatic, this hole around the shifter is not the normal five-speed shape. So to make up the difference and seal it up, I just use a little bit of Gorilla Tape. Uh, keeps the water and exhaust smells and debris and things like that out. Next, the most important part of the car goes on, which is the cup holder, and then I tighten down all the bolts that are remaining for the accordion boot. Next, all of the plastic center console pieces go together, and lastly, we can put the shift knob back on. After everything's back together, then I'm just going to go ahead and with the car in the air, run it through all the gears and make sure the clutch is working properly. Lastly, after we know the clutch is functioning properly, I'm going to lift the car up one more time and just double check and make sure there are no leaks and that everything looks like it's good to go. My first impression of this XCD clutch is that the pedal feel is a little bit stiffer than the eBay clutch. It's not heavy, but easy to control and definitely feels like it has quite a bit more clamping force than the one that we replaced. 
I think this clutch is going to work great in this car and I'm excited to get back out to the track. Thanks for watching and as always leave any comments below if you have any questions about the install or recommendations or any other videos that you guys want to see. Sheesh.